computer. Request security procedure of access to file codenamed Project Unicorn. Identify for palm print scan. Security code identity Black Arrow 1 Alpha 1 Diplos. Security scan confirmed and approved. Access introduction. Whoever you are that are watching this, you are one of the privileged to be a party to the following information and data. I am Jason Havlin, commander of the Star Watch organization, codename Project Unicorn. It's the late 21st century. The Earth is progressing well. Mankind's technology striving to unravel the secrets locked in all things. Science holds all the answers. Well, not quite. There is one place still that remains a mystery. Stonehenge. A legendary enigma and a monumental symbol of mankind's ancient heritage. A popular speculation has it as an astronomical clock to tell the days and the seasons by. However, the truth of its purpose is not known. Well, not known, that is, except by a select few. Far beneath the stone circle is a vast cavern. And within this cavern lives a crystal. Yes, indeed, lives is the word. As I now know, this crystal is singularly in governance over the whole earth itself. It changes the seasons, feeds the soils. All the forces of nature are controlled, monitored, and balanced by it. For want of a better term, it is the sentinel of this planet. This sentinel's primary concern is to protect life on this planet, be it human, animal, insect, or any other form for that matter. A crisis point has been reached, and one that if action is not taken, will mean the impending premature destruction of this planet. Now, when Professor Patrick Caledon excavated the site of Stonehenge some years ago, the crystal was compelled to communicate with him a warning of the dangers that lie ahead. Throughout the universe are many such forces as this particular crystal, each coexisting with others to keep the status quo. Well, the relay point for our crystal, for some unknown reason, has misfunctioned. This will have a knock-on effect. The Sentinel will experience breakdown, and in turn, the Earth will find the elements in chaos. Tidal waves, tornadoes, earthquakes will become commonplace everywhere. Within 10 years, this planet will cease to support life of any description. Now, this information was explained to me by the professor, and as anyone would, I knew the urgency. In my position as a high-ranking diplomat, I've been able to gain the finance necessary for the instigation of an organization to remedy the situation. If we are successful, long-term plans are to help maintain the balance of peace, as the crystal has requested. Hold. Access information on the base of operations. Penvelen Cove, a quaint little village located on the Cornish coast. Underground are vast natural limestone caverns, the ideal base for the development and construction of all sophisticated craft the Star Watch organization will require. The village itself is a haven for secrecy all the villagers themselves being operatives for the project. Access information on main operatives. Security is of paramount importance. All those involved have been chosen for their specific skills and operate on a need-to-know basis. The top personnel comprise Black Arrow, whose status as a high-ranking diplomat gives him the perfect cover. Early Bird, 
resident scientific advisor and designer of the hardware the organization requires, and Gemini, the controller of operations at Penbell & Co. Mission crew have been selected with vital military training. They comprise Ranger, Norwegian, whose powers of endurance know no equal. Ariane, British, an electronics wizard and an excellent tactical expert. Vanguard, American, strong of intellect, nerves of steel. Vostok, Russian, cool, calm, collected, good pilot and an excellent leader. The fifth member of the mission crew, the Telstar robot, designed to protect human life and to carry out missions in any alien environment where a human cannot survive. Other operative of note, Professor Caledon's pet robot, Proto. Prototype to the more refined Telstar. A minor accident has left this android, apparently, with the irreparable mind of a child, though the professor has not brought himself to disconnecting him yet. Pause. Let's skip to information on hardware capabilities. The hardware available to the project will be very impressive and well in advance of the technology of the time due to the innovative alloys and propulsion systems made possible by information imparted by the Sentinel Crystal. Blueprints have rendered the following visuals. The Armadillo, a multi-purpose ground vehicle capable of traveling across extreme terrain. The Falcon, an atmospheric interceptor with a sophisticated seeker probe. The Panther, a sleek jet cycle capable of deft maneuverability. The Vulture, a massively powerful container ship for other craft. The Narwhal, a deep space combat ship fully equipped with all that the crew require. The Tarantula, a single man vehicle used to gain access to the most inaccessible of places. The Hornet, a very fast and maneuverable craft equipped with tracking devices. The craft are constantly being updated for various missions. The latest development being the Manta, a multi-purpose submersible capable of phenomenal speeds and equipped with awesome defense capabilities. So, the organization, the know-how, the team and the hope are all there. Project Unicorn is clear of the tasks that lie ahead. It won't be easy, but it must be done. I trust we can succeed, because we all know what will happen if we fail. This project has got to succeed.
something about uh, a series you were supposed to have made with Barry Letts that never got off the ground? I can't call the name off the That's interesting, yes, that's Star Watch. That one. Yeah, Star Watch. Well, Star Watch were, uh, looked like being terribly good, and it's still on the brink. Everybody is interested in it because it's superbly set out and it's a very green subject. And uh, it, it was a, a, a fellow called uh, Christopher Leach who uh, worked originally with um, Thunderbirds and that the Anderson outfit. And Chris Leach was, uh, set this thing up and it looked frightfully good because he had marvelous brochures and he had, did you see any of the brochures? Did you, see, did you see the layout? Of them? No. No. Well, they were wonderful and he spent fortunes on them. But of course he made a terrible error, that old thing is that you must not run before you learn to walk. And he ran very fast with this and uh, spent lots of money on things he shouldn't have spent money on. The result was that a producer would say, I don't want to be told who's playing this, I'll do the casting, or my, my, my casting department would do the casting. I don't want to be told this is written for John Perfey and Pat Trout and various people that he'd said, and he had photographs of them and so on. So they'd all collapsed, uh, but because uh, also it was extremely expensive. And, uh, but they are now reconsidering it, and it, because it has a very green basis, and of course with a green basis, <coughs> anything is likely to uh, get a, a good audience now, a good reaction. They think that's if they can afford it. So that's what they're working on now.